What's up, everybody, and welcome back to my channel slash podcast. This is your Lazy Girl World with Let's Spoil It. And today I am joined by a special guest. Do you want to introduce yourself, special guest? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, my name is Zap75. <laughs> <laughs> For privacy reasons, that's the name I'm going with now. <laughs> All right. And are we set talking about relations? How we are, how we know each other or no? Yeah, we're brother and sister. <laughs> All right, cool, cool. He is 10 years, yes, nine to 10 years younger than me. Yes, that's right. I'm cool. <laughs> this person is an amazing person. You should quit and you should watch all her videos. She's great at it. Thank you. So today we're talking about the TV show, animated TV series from 1984. Genesis Climber, Most Beat Up. What'd you say? I actually didn't know that it was how old it was. I just yeah, started old, man. Now, let me start off by saying this was hard for me to watch because it was old. I was like, this really? Could be something from 1984. Like, the anime cartoon looks old. <laughs> now, that, okay, was, that was where it looked the best. <laughs> now, the whole premise of this TV show is that there are these aliens that come and they take over the Earth. And basically pushed everybody out to Mars and wherever else they decided to live. So there's like Mars Second Liberation Force decided we're gonna go back to Earth and take it back from from the aliens. And then a lot of stuff happens. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to focus on though uh, right now was the theme of the show. I thought it was kind of interesting that it was it was futuristic, but when they get to Earth, it's um it's kind of like a combination of futurism mixed with uh, the Wild West, you know? Now, how is this a thing? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> is this a thing? I might have to look up what the... <laughs> but, like, that's just the setting. Is it? I guess that is the setting. Yeah, theme, the subject of a talk, a piece of writing, a person's... St okay, yeah, it's the setting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Finish I want to talk about the setting. The setting. Finish the setting. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought it was very interesting how this was, you know, how this is done. Um, and, you know, throughout the show, they show you, like, the many attempts that humanity had made to, um, you know, to fight back the in bit um, and fail horribly. Yeah, almost. I don't know if there were many attempts. There was just like the initial fight in the first liberation force. Right. So, so you, you got like remainders of the first like liberation force still there, but then you've also got other guys from the second liberation force. No, that just kind of but we only saw Stig though, didn't we? No, there were. Oh, well, I guess is. the soldiers that were in that town were second liberation, huh? Mm-hmm. I think that like that big town probably just contained like both, really. Yeah. Because I mean, if if you were a soldier and no other town will take you in, they'll sell you out immediately. <laughs> you know, you might as well go to the only place where it looks like you'll have safety. Yeah, that's true. No matter which liberation force you were from. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was just really cool to see kind of like this, like to see this contrast of a world that was, you know, pristine and beautiful at one moment, it just basically getting blasted back to the Stone Age, and mm -hmm. their you know failed attempts, you know, as reminders in the background, just strewn across the land. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, they somehow find working spaceships in those in those wrecks, though. <laughs> they had to fix it. Oh yeah, I, I mean, I know they had to fix it, but like they find, remember they found that thing called the like T lead or something like that. Yeah, that connects to the legios. Uh huh. And it was, <laughs> they just and then they had on like, over three different like, things. They had the legios, the T lead, and the mosquitoes. And, and uh, and Jim's truck. <laughs> My Jeep. Right. <laughs> My like Jeep. A, I, I thought it was hilarious that he that in that one episode he lost it. When his jeep got destroyed, man, he was like, "I'm out of here. I'm leaving, y'all. I'm done with this. I'm not fighting, and I'm never coming back." 
I think he was the <laughs> Jeep got destroyed and he realized he almost died again. He was like, mm-mm. <laughs> mm-mm. Now, uh, I guess since we don't have theme, well, we, we can just move on to character. <laughs> <laughs> I think the theme that they were going for was to always fight back. I guess so. I guess like, it's... don't give up even when it seems like this is an impossible situation. Yeah, but I I think there was a secondary theme of like just dealing with loss. Because remember at at the end of the series, you know, Stig finally realized, you know, he had to move on from Marlene. Yeah. And I guess like fight back dealing with loss. And just not hating something because you don't understand it. Although the end bit came in hot and heavy with the weapons. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, it didn't have to be that way. <laughs> that was the only thing that I couldn't, like, sympathize with the end bit over. It's just like, yeah, I know you guys were looking for a better place to live and everything. But you came in killing us. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, but you know what the one thing they said? They were like, we made it, we made it better. Like, we... Had helped your Earth return to what it was trying to, what it was initially. Right. So. That that was the one thing that I thought was, you know, that they were good at. But it's just like you couldn't, you couldn't have come and told that to us. Right. It's like he, it's like, hang on, you can't just, you can't just walk into someone's house, start shooting at them, and then you know, be all like, you guys are ruining this house. <laughs> <laughs> oh everything God. was exactly where I wanted it to be. You, I mean, you shot my china and everything. That, that was yeah. supposed to be there. You ruined it. You weren't taking care of it. We came here because we thought it was lightness, but it seems like there's darkness here. It's like you brought the darkness. <laughs> right, you brought the Me. darkness out of people. <laughs> Everyone angry. And that was something funny that Stig was talking about. Well, okay, so yeah, so it's crazy because they brought the darkness out of the people and then they were like well we'll leave because there's a lot of darkness here now <laughs> and it's just like <laughs> you cause this it's like they're all fighting back I, I can't believe my slaves are fighting back against me uh <laughs> exactly it's, it's like yeah they're really getting dark now they even named something dark legios you don't you don't see it <laughs> right we're trying to have the hvt usage y'all keep attacking us now, okay, <laughs> theme, setting, characters. We have Stig. Stig. Yeah, Stig Bernard. Yeah, uh, Mint. Um, well, oh, so initially we just have Stig and Ray. And also, the crazy thing to me that, or something that's always interesting to me is that they always have American names or words with starting with R. But I don't think that's a naturally occurring sound in like the Japanese language. So it always just sounds like lay or day. Lay, lay. Yeah. And so it was very interesting. I was just like, why do you keep naming? <laughs> I watched the like, anime that did that. Like a lot of like, um, like things that they pronounce with an L when they come, when they get translated over here to America, they got an R in the name. Or oh, something. is that R what happens? Hmm. Well, so, if, just, if they had just named him Lay, I would have been perfectly okay with that. <laughs> I it's, just think it's funny too because because that happens with a lot of things. Galm Squadron was not meant to be Galm Squadron. That was Garm from Ace Combat. Hmm. Okay, so we had Stig and Ray. They were the first two people we came in contact with. Stig obviously was from the Mars um, Second Liberation Force. He was all by himself because his whole squadron died. Yeah. Yeah. You, I didn't realize that until like the end where I was like, oh, no one lived. <laughs> Actually, he, pieces of them did, did live. They just kind of like scattered all over the planet. And then, um, okay, then he met Ray. And then we had Mint. So all three of those were together. And then later we had, later we had Yellow, Belmont, and we had Hooket and Jim. So what is that? Six people? We always consistently yeah. had six people. Uh, now, a little yeah, little that. something about Yellow, for those of you who never watched this show. Uh, Yellow, when you first see them, they, uh, you know, they're a singer, she's a girl, <clears throat> and uh, 
you know, they, they did a really good job of, you know, having her, you know, sing. She could, you know, sing and pretty much just be yellow. Uh, but then at the yellow end of that episode. That she wanted to join Stig and Ray, and they were like, no, the girl's going to get in the way. And he was, and she was like, well, I won't be a girl anymore. And they're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> She she just she starts taking off her clothes. And I'm like, oh no, oh no, it's getting it's one of those shows. Isn't it? No, <laughs> and then he turns around. It, well, I just spoiled it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. a guy. <laughs> I accidentally said he already. Yellow is, Yellow Belmont is a guy, right? <laughs> but also does like singing. So it was crazy because. Like, he would do the songs as yellow, you know, and dress up and all of that. And a, a lot of time, but any other time, he's just talking in his regular man, man deep voice. Right. But then sometimes he would break out with the girl voice. I was just like, what? <laughs> Why are you thinking? <laughs> what was different in this situation? <laughs> I but think I did he like just to screw around with his teammates. I think so. <laughs> He's like, we were just, you were a woman just a second ago. This is still confusing. <laughs> they ended up having another person, Aisha, join them. Now, when Aisha initially joined them, I realized that I had accidentally skipped an episode because I was watching it on like 2B and I tried to go back and I thought I was picking up right where it, it ended, but apparently I skipped it and all of a sudden they had this girl, Aisha, and I was like, who is this? So I finished watching my episode and I was like, Something's up with her. So then I had to go back, and I was like, oh, she was dropped by the end bit. Now, in my mind, I was like, dropped by the end bit. She got something to do with the end bit. Maybe other people would have been like, maybe she was kidnapped by the end bit. I mean, because obviously we saw in the later episode, the end bit did kidnap people and experiment on them. Mm -hmm. So maybe, you know, anybody would have thought that. But when I, when I met her in the second episode, I was like, she looks too confused all the time. She's like, yeah. love, kept repeating stuff, woman. What, would you talk in complete sentences? I, the, I actually, like, one thing about Aisha uh, that confused me, I mean, let me just say right off the bat, it was almost obvious that she was an inbit. They're carrying around this egg. The egg fell off, fell out, and then you know Ray stumbles upon these kind of like, you know, kind of like, yeah, leftovers of the egg. Uh, yeah, that's gross. <laughs> I it and off then, the then, <laughs> then, then he goes and finds Aisha naked, of course, because Japan. But um, <laughs> I mean, also she didn't have any. She was in an egg. I know, but still. <laughs> so, but the thing is. Both uh, Aisha and uh, Ray had red hair, and Ray said something that that tipped me off when he saw like the you know the liquid on the ground. He said, "I feel like I've seen this before," and I was like, "Are you? And in you one of them, aren't you?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I really, really wanted to for that to be the case for that for this guy to have been an inbit this whole time, but not actually known that he was. Now, did he get? I don't think he. I don't think he was because it it um would have been. I think they would have told us kind of like how they did with Aisha. The character I hated the most was Mint. I hated her voice. Didn't know how old she was supposed to be. She was always crying and screaming. I hated it. I know that was the worst thing ever. I usually don't watch anything with somebody like that. I'm like, well, forget it. Because it's I, I just like I just can't figure out like how I want to feel about her. I hated her, I hated her so much, but there were times when she was a genuinely good person. I, didn't I mean, she did. She was. She did kind of like keep the team from breaking up. She did. She was like, "Come back," even though she left first. When she got married off, I was so happy. I was like, "Good, we don't have to have her stupid voice anymore." <laughs> <laughs> And then she comes. How she even know where they were? Who knows? And she's like, "Here I am." All right. Maybe she just thought, "Let me just go to the nearest like place where it looks like they'd be." Bro, she's like, "Here I am." I'm back. The divorce didn't work. I mean, they never should work. We are divorced. I don't want to talk about it. Like, I don't even know yeah, how, how old y'all are. How does divorce even work in the uh, in that like tribe system? Does it even work, or did she just have, did she, she have to sneak away? She just left. 
<laughs> boy, boy, come let, let's let's say something here to to the viewers. Uh, Yellow repeatedly throughout the story, he kind of like goes back and forth between you know acting like a guy. The the, the like the village chieftain's son finds Yellow, thinks <laughs> thinks she thinks he's a woman, and just whacks him across the head <laughs> and kidnaps him. <laughs> it's like I found a wife. Right, and <laughs> Papa, look, I found a wife. I caught me a wife. It's like that's how this works here. <laughs> Yellow was like, I am a man. Let me go. That was embarrassing. I was just look. I was like so like. I was a little. That was the only time when I was worried for me when she stayed back with them because I'm just like, I, you're not gonna be happy there. You were worried. <laughs> no, I think that yeah. was the first time. That was. I think that was pretty. Early on, because they didn't have Aisha yet, right? They did. They did have Aisha. Oh, well, this is dumb. They sh- I feel like they should have ordered it differently, then. <laughs> because okay, so with the end bit, the, obviously they came and they changed the Earth around. I think we talked about all the other things we wanted to, didn't we? Setting yeah, the main characters. So, well, the thing. Let's talk about Stig real quick. I like Stig a lot. You know. He he was I the weird thing about the show is I can't figure out who's meant to be the main protagonist. Was it meant to be yeah. Stig or was it meant to be Ray? Stig. Stig, maybe, okay. Maybe Ray was just like, you know, co star. Yes. Like that one side character everybody likes. Yeah. Because uh because like there are many times when he mostly got the spotlight. I thought he was the one that was gonna end up with uh Aisha. But oddly enough it was Stig. Yeah, but like yeah. he had that whole adventure with her in in his brain when he passed out in the desert, and I was like, "Are they telling me? Go ahead. What? Are they uh, that, communicating telepathically or something?" And that dream though that he had, or like he was remembering the fact that they got stuck in the underground lab. I hated the fact that he didn't remember that when he fully awoke all the way. Because that enough, Wait, what? that enough. Remember when? Because when Ray passed out in the desert because he got lost, then he had that whole crazy dream with Aisha in it. Then when he woke up, he remember he was talking about the Leto and the Shandal, and he remembering that um that they were in the, like the underground lab. He had gotten stuck in the underground lab with Stig, and he was like, you know, the the inbit are inbit are like experimenting and evolving themselves. So that they mm-hmm. best suit the earth. And but when he finally woke up all the way, he didn't remember that at all. Yeah. He was just like, oh man, what's going on? But if he had, they could have been said right then and there, like, man, she an bit. It took forever. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. had inklings of the fact that she was an in bit. Yellow ran into that one girl that happened to be piloting an in bit. But not realizing mm-hmm. that she was the in bit just piloting a ship in the end, and it was. And yeah. then he, and then Actually, he thought about it with Aisha, and then he was just like, "Never mind." <laughs> it was stupid. Actually, you know what was uh, interesting about those two characters? Um, I forgot what that girl's name was, but um, I think like they were kind of like a recurring character throughout the show. We just didn't realize that they were that character. Because they would always get hunted by like the same like um inbit. The two I same think, like, two inbit people. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, like they like there were two like I think they first start off as like grabs and then they yeah. probably like went think, to like, whatever the next one was. Something. Right. They graduate into like the one with the big like lasers on his head. Mm-hmm. And then, and then it's like, even though they failed the mission several times, I don't know how you get an upgrade after you failed your mission. Uh, but there then she turned them one. into people. Yeah, then she turned them into people. Now, yeah, that's the part that frustrated me the most. Like, okay, you're seeing that there's a person inside of this in-bit machine that it, it essentially is, but you're not willing to believe that Aisha is an in-bit. Even after they didn't shoot y'all when, in, when Aisha was right there, they kept looking at her. She kept looking at them. And the fact that I feel like she knew, like, after that whole snow, like, them getting trapped in the mountains, 
I'm pretty sure she knew at the time that she wasn't in it, but then just kept. Yeah, because she she looked at uh the one girl, and they kind of like they kind of like you know went into this kind of like I don't know phase where they kind of re- realized who they were. Yeah, and then she just kept hiding it. Yeah, I'm just trying to like play it off. I'm just like, uh, man, you know who you what you are. And then well, I, I think she she remembers that she's traveling around with Stig, who has an unhealthy obsession with killing everything in Bay. I hate them. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he said. So she was like, can we all just get along? He's like, I hate in Bay. It's the only thing that's feeling. <laughs> so she, that's probably when she was like, I better not say anything. <laughs> so that Next was thing the, you know, this guy going to come and shoot me in my sleep. <laughs> and, the only thing, and then one of the other things that just annoyed me so much with Stig, though, was how he was such a soldier. And so, like, I think it was like the second to last episode where they ended up seeing that girl from Moonbase. And literally, her only job was to take pictures. Like, it was a dangerous job. She was just supposed to take pictures of the fighting, of the action, what the what the inbit were looking like. And he's just like, you just watch your people die? <laughs> <laughs> like, I did my job. <laughs> and he's like, how good? I think it was kind of like contrast between, like, this super heroic guy and this I'm just following orders kind of, you know, girl. <laughs> yeah, she's like, I'm just doing what they told me to do. I don't have time. Right. I thought it was ridiculous that she died because what did she die from? Like an inbit landed next to her and exploded or something? I'm thinking, oh, I didn't think she was going to die, though. I thought she was Me neither. <laughs> I was like, oh, I, I was like, Monty Python, this is just a flesh wound. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> stupid. And then... <laughs> Yeah, okay, so then, okay, I guess we're at the end now. Because obviously we we know that Aisha is an end bit. Oh, and then that's when they realize I, that, that's when they realize, well, they all realized it, but that's when it was irrefutable that I, Aisha was an end bit. Because uh-huh. then they were like, oh man, end bit's bleeding the green blood. And they look at Aisha, she got green blood coming out of her arm. Then Stick touched her arm and it was like, green blood. And it was just like, <laughs> finally. <laughs> Everybody's been beating around the bush. Obviously, she's an end bit. Why right. I think Ray must have known, but he just didn't say anything. I think so. <laughs> Maybe he did remember that dream. I think he was just realizing it the whole time. I was just like, and then Stig tried. I think it was either Stig or Ray that tried to say something at one point in time, and and um, Yellow was like, "It doesn't matter." It's like, I man, you knew she was an end bit. Quit playing. <laughs> <laughs> so. yeah, it was actually it was ridiculous because they the first thing that they said like when they showed Earth getting destroyed, I was trying to figure out really hard like what happened. And it's just just this beam of light comes down and just spreads all over the Earth, and I'm just like, it didn't That's... even get destroyed though. I know, right? But it was just like they they took out like major cities and whatnot. Oh, that's very <laughs> true. Uh-huh. Pretty much, they just wiped out all the important stuff, like Independence Day, but faster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, but like, they they show that they sent a, a previous Liberation Force, and that in poorly. Uh, you think that they like come up with like some you know better tactics? They were the like first Liberation, <laughs> death. Well, we'll try second Liberation. Oh man, that didn't work either. <laughs> And they, they did. It's like it's like they repeat the exact same mistakes every time they go into a fight with these guys. <laughs> By the way, the name of the aliens is Inbit. They're the Inbit. 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 <laughs> okay, so what? Okay, so what happened at the beginning was that like they were like, "We're gonna go down and take back Earth," and then the aliens were like, "No, you're not. We're gonna kill y'all before you even get down there." And Stig was one of the few, as you mentioned, that made it, and then. And he was sad because he, his his wife or his fiance died, so he was just like, right. I just thought that was the, the first off. Let's just <laughs> let's start with the way the episode opened up. <laughs> Marlene, marry me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, what does this have to do with anything? They were just trying I to get some just, I, was like, I was 
just like, whoa, we're <laughs> way too early. Like, how are you going to make that the first thing that you get said in this show? Literally the only thing. And she was like, no. <laughs> All embarrassing Dude. stuff. That was, that, was the we- <laughs> that was the weirdest part of this whole anime to me because I'm trying, I'm getting myself all set up for a big space battle and everything, and then you then you brought your love interest with you on the ship. <laughs> I literally just hated her. Well, I think she was just a part of it somehow, or I mean, I guess that was her job already. Yeah, she was. I believe she like communications officer or something. But like the way that she dies. Was it was heartbreaking? <laughs> you it was sad to you. Yeah, I mean, this guy just proposed. He did. <laughs> this guy just proposed to to his girlfriend, and he's over there trying to like keep the inbit away from that ship. Like I don't know how well he was doing with all the other ships. Not well. Because once apparently. once your girlfriend's on one ship, you probably might might start focusing on that one a little more. Yeah. So uh, I think a bunch of uh, transports got shot down in the name <laughs> of his girlfriend. <laughs> but, but he's over there shooting at him with his mech and everything, and they get to Earth and they realize. Was this Mospita? No, no, that wasn't a Mospita. That was called a um, forgot what that thing was called. A Legios, Legios. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, so that's why when he came to Earth, his, like, crash and burn, and all he had was the most speed Yeah. So he's shooting at them, and the way the Inbit destroys ships is they don't shoot at them. They grapple onto them, and I guess they, like, start ripping up the ship. (laughs) Yeah, with their claws. They look like crabs. And that's when a design flaw of many of these spaceships showed up. None of them have cannons on them. They got and missiles. And none of them had, like, g- good enough armor. No. Just came and ripped you apart. Yeah. It's like, With the hands, like, they didn't yes. even have thumbs. <laughs> it's like, yes, this is a great idea. Let's make a ship that's got one long neck section that one of these things can grapple onto and just rip in half. <laughs> Side note, I like your shirt. Is it new? No, I've had this for a long time. Oh, okay. Cool. Same way you had your uh, Johnny Cupcake shirt. All right. Johnny Cupcake. <laughs> That's courage. <laughs> so okay, so yeah, so girl. Oh, uh, I was about to. I was about to make a Kobe joke and ooh, can't. No, I can't, can't make that. Anymore. That. No more Kobe stuff. So. You can, but it is sad. He is gone. Yeah. Um. So then, so he lands on Earth. He tries to. And then the whole premise of the show is him just trying to get to reflex point. So that... Yeah. It, I don't even like, know if they know... Reason, he, go ahead. <laughs> for whatever reason, he thought he was getting ready to do all that by himself. Yeah, he was like, I gotta get to reflex point. Got down there and then aliens started attacking him. But I don't even know if he knew what was in reflex point. He didn't. <laughs> and like, nobody knew what was in reflex like, point. We just have to get there. I guess they knew it was like the headquarters. They, I guess... Maybe that's where the large con- congregation of uh, the, the inbit were. And I think I think they kind of like had an idea that that was their like enemy HQ because they always they always called it that, you know, Did when they? they were yeah. Okay. To like they always say like the headquarter uh, headquarters or like the um, main staging force of the enemy's operations. Hmm. Uh, and that was the last thing that was, you know, that he was told or commanded to do was, you know, no matter what, go reflex point. Even if you're the only one that made it. <laughs> Man. And then, so throughout the show, they're just like going to different towns, essentially, and having to fight in bit. The craziest thing to me was this whole HBT situation. I, I was just like, well, not crazy, but I was just like, who made the HBT? And what <laughs> did why would the the inbit hoarding it? The weird I think the thing is the inbit were like I think they kind of like run off the same energy or something like that. So they're the sensitive HBT to energy? it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. HBT is some kind of hydrogen energy. Is that what they said? It, I, just I read about it somewhere. I don't oh, know. okay. Because I'm like, all of a sudden, I don't talking remember about where it. the show <laughs> yeah, specifically said anything. Okay. 
Yeah, because they did have a very interesting, you know, kind of like concept that you don't really see in like most like space shows or something like that, or like post apocalyptic, is they have to refuel. They wind up going to these different towns to get supplies. That's why they had to get, they were like breaking in the warehouses and almost uh, drowning. <laughs> like, we need HVT. <laughs> That's why they had Yellow do a whole performance just to steal HVT. Right. But yeah, so they end up just going through a bunch of towns, realizing that people are actually scared of the end bit that are giving people up to the end bit. One of the most shocking episodes for me was when they went to that one town that was like super, super close to the end bit um, fortress. Oh yeah, full yeah. and it was just all soldiers in there. Yeah, and like nobody was being attacked and they're just <laughs> running around with their weapons or whatever on their trucks, living life, getting drunk, whatever. And they're like, why are y'all so happy, super close to this, you know, in headquarters or fortress? And they're like, mm, we have a, what, what was that dude's name? They're like, we have an, uh, the army dude, the Mars based dude. I think his name was like Texas. Jonathan or something. Was it John Randolph? Jonathan. That was Jonathan. Ah, we gotta look it up. <laughs> I hate the fact that I can't remember this, these guys' names. I was happy that you remembered the people's names, because I was like, What's that guy's name? I went and looked it up and they gave me the American names. I'm like, no. <laughs> I know. Hey, I mean, at least you remember the name of the show because I kept calling it Genesis Mountain Climber Mosquito. Also, what is a Mosquito? Because that's the only word in, in like the English alphabet. Because the rest of them is in the Jap like Genesis Climber is in, Jap in the Japanese language. But then it's like Japanese word and then Mosquito in English. And I was just like, <clears throat> how did they put this like it was a real thing? That stands for Military Operations Soldier Protection Emergency Aviation Dive Armor. When did you look this up? I just looked it up. <laughs> oh, as I was talking about it? Yeah. The funny thing is, his name was Stick. But on the show, they called him Stig. Or maybe and I think I like Stig a lot better. Yeah, Stig is... No, no, you read. I think what you're reading is the... Uh, IMDB. Oh, you're probably seeing like their American names. Um, I guess so. Cause, cause Ray is Rand. I don't know. On IMDb, they still have him as Ray. Except oh, okay. Stick. Okay, so I cannot remember when. Yeah, his the name is Jonathan. Is... Colonel Jonathan. Yeah. The funny thing You're is, right. apparently, the show in, in its most literal translation is Armored Genesis, Most Peter. I don't know which That's one makes more sense. Though. I know. <laughs> the armor part of it's in the most heated thing. So yeah, so the craziest, the, that was the craziest episode to me. When they went to that town, they were like, oh, we have Colonel Jonathan. He keeps us safe. We don't have to worry about it. And Colonel Jonathan comes back from trying to get HBT. And they're like, oh, we're mm -hmm. so-and-so. And he's just like, like, basically, he didn't make it. And then Stig. Like, where's Stig? Stig didn't make it. <laughs> no, not, I'm talking about before. Oh. When they first got to the town. Uh -huh. And then Stig was like, man, I want to help you. And he was like, oh, yeah, let's go on this secret dawn mission and, and let Stig get captured. Well, let Stig get left in the forest. He was like, run, Stig, run. And then he went back <laughs> to, to the uh, city and was like, he didn't make it. And it was just like, man, you let him run off and didn't even try to save him. Right. At all. I mean, he was giving, he was, like, the show was dropping big hints that he wasn't, you know, that he was up to no good, though. Every time you see the little, like, eyeglass glint, you know, and they, like, you never see their eyes, it's like, yeah, they're they're doing something bad. I mean, he, well, I was almost like, man, is he an alien? <laughs> That's how I felt. I was, what's going on with him? Why is he so weird and shady? He's gonna go back and drink, drink, drink a drink, and then just be like, Nah, he didn't make it. We can go look. For You're him. talking about me because I started drinking. I know it was funny though because it happened at the same time. <laughs> and they were like, mm, he didn't make it, and so then his friends went and saved him. And he he tried to kill them or let them get killed by the end bit also because it turned out he was a low down dirty traitor. He, like he literally was trading one person for one thing of HBT. I'm like, you're not getting more. <laughs> <laughs> not getting more from this. And Ray was like, he's a traitor. And Stig was like, no, I don't believe you. But he was a traitor. Then he killed yeah. himself. He, he, he died in the end. 
Yeah, he died when they pretty much inspired him to keep fighting, you know, for what his original ideals were. Yeah. I think that happened a couple more times too, where the it's like with those group of old men from like I think the yeah. first liberation force, they were like, yeah, like they just didn't care about anything, just setting people up, stealing from them, not gonna work. I think, but I didn't like the end of that episode because I'm, I'm like, oh no, the 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 giant Invit base is they they all gathered around on the cliff face and everything, and they were getting ready to destroy that town full of people. Yeah, you talking about the old all the the fortress one with Colonel Jonathan? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Once Colonel Jonathan they, was gone, there was nothing like, that could help him. And they, I was like, Stinky should have stuck around, man. Once Colonel Jonathan died, they were like, try to like, like, get people away from the thing. You think that now Jonathan's dead? They're just gonna leave the city alone? Right. It was too close. They were like, Oh well, we knew y'all were there the entire time, but we just had a deal. We don't have a deal anymore. We'll just kill you all now. You know, something like, right. oh man, that one was sad. It's just like, oh no, oh no. <laughs> and then the second one, I think a lot of them had like people being inspired to like fight again after they kind of like lost their way. So the one with all the old men was funny. And then, mm-hmm. but it you was, said it was funny. They crashed their giant spaceship into, into the tower though. and died. It was sad because all of them were like, I think they're all okay, except for um, Darjeeling, which was, I think they named him after a T or something. I was like, Darjeeling. <laughs> but he ended up like kamikazing, essentially. He went kamikaze. And what did he like try to take out an invid or something? How did he die? Oh my God. You're talking about the uh, the guy who was a dad? Yeah. And he that was son ooh, on the I wasn't expecting I wasn't expecting that. He he went out, he put on his helmet and everything. He he looked like he was so ready. And then the next scene is just hit, they just cover him up with blank. I'm like, oh my god. Now, was he going to fight? I can't remember. Was he going to fight somebody or no? No, he was just going to go because they got a transmission. They said, listen, if you guys are you know, still conference. left around, you know, on the earth, we need for you to destroy these communication towers. So he decided that since none of his friends were going to help him, he was going to do that by himself. And did he take out any, or we don't even know. No, he didn't even get there. He just, he got obliterated. <laughs> okay, I can't remember. I just knew he was like, I'm kamikaze and died. He got he yeah. got close he got close enough for them to sense his HBT and they they just flew up there and probably just shot him. And his friends were like, What is wrong with this stupid man? And then that's when Stig and everybody realized like, Oh, that's his son on the screen. He didn't want his son to come down and Realized he had kind of lost his way and his will to fight, even though he's a soldier. <laughs> right. <laughs> he was crazy. But uh, but that that episode did highlight like one of the worst aspects of uh of the Mars Federation. I mean, Liberation Forces like aircraft and vehicles. They made the uh, what was that? I forgot what the name of that ship was called. Garfish. The Garfish. Uh, Cruiser, mm-hmm. and uh, so you talking about the, the, what the old man had? Uh huh. <clears throat> I feel like they made was it with a the little... ability to launch, you know, Legios to protect itself. Um, and all it, but all it really had for like any like form of protection was a single like cannon on the bottom, and four missile launchers. Yeah, <laughs> that are all facing forward. <laughs> Yeah, that was sad at the end of that one because at the end of that one, all the old men died in that episode as well. I'm just like, I think Star Wars do better than that. (laughs) (laughs) Now, Star Wars will find a way to put a cannon on the back of a TIE fighter somehow. There's not even enough room on the doggone thing for two people, but they did. No. So then we get to the last episode where they decide to fight against the end it. And you see. But there still really are only those two two end bits that have like changed into people. Mm-hmm. I just want to say about the the blue haired guy, Batra. Yeah, the I'm guessing that Inbit's brother. Uh, <laughs> he they like 
tried to give him character development. Um, he, was in the angry last one? he was so angry too. I know. I was, kill just kill like, I was just like, you can't, you can't have this guy be here and then give him character development in the last three episodes. They made him angry. They were like, oh, he's a person now. We can give him feelings and stuff. We can speak. <laughs> He was so angry. Aisha was like, we should all just get along. Maybe we should just talk to each other, you know? And he was like, nah. And Stoji, 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 she was like, yeah, I think we should talk. And he was like, nah. Oh, yeah, Sho yeah her name was Shoji. No, I thought it was Storji, Stoji. Stoji, um, I, man, I can't remember. You know you don't remember any of these characters. I don't know why you even try to say anything. It's just like it's like the first like I think the episode when they were in New York, uh, <laughs> he's just like you know what, it's time for character development. I'm gonna kill these guys. <laughs> All of them. He was like, I'm, I'm just coming into your story. territory, girl. He was like, I'm coming in your territory. She's like, for what? He's like, I'm about to kill him. She's like, in my territory though, and he was blowing up everything. <laughs> He, she didn't even do anything to stop him. I'm just like, you're just going to let this man walk in here and say, all right, your territory is mine now. <laughs> the funny thing is they just came there to like live and survive and like make the, make the world habitable for themselves. And, uh -huh. But then once they turned into humans, though, they had like human emotions. And it was like, right. that was your fatal mistake right there. When she became a human, <laughs> then she started caring about yellow. And she's like, I don't know why I like yellow so much. I should have dropped so out the egg, and it's, and which is crazy. Well, when I come back to her, so Batra is just like the angriest alien that there ever was. And then <laughs> Aisha, I don't understand why she was even being transported, because those two were like they had evolved in front of the little at reflex point. Where was she being taken? I am no in idea. human form with no clothes. In an egg. Like none of the other ones did that. They just were like, oof, humans with in right. clothes on already. That was dumb. And I, I just, it, I think they just really gave him the short end of the stick. He goes from like being like, like competent to incompetent within like two scenes. Batra, like the time when he got taken out on uh, Mint's birthday. He, he, they who, set him up. Uh, the, the angry one. Oh, Batra. Okay, okay. They they written like they set him up, and they got fireworks going off all over the place. He thinks he's getting attacked from all sides. Yeah, and he he like I he, love fireworks. I believe like several times he got his like mech like like damaged really bad. Like it's missing a leg or an arm or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they still keep him around, and then. But then they go and attack Reflex Point. Like the whole like army comes to attack Reflex Point, and he's just shooting them down one after another. It's like, how are you so stupid and so good <laughs> at the same time? So then the in the last episode, you would think, okay, Aisha's like, oh well, we should all talk it out. We can live together in harmony. Matra's like, no, everybody has to die. <laughs> like you think, okay, so maybe there'll be like an actual fight, and then people will win. But initially, the main um, in-bit lady, whatever she was, she was just like, don't worry, we'll beat you. We've beat you twice before. And it was like, hmm. <laughs> Humans are never coming back to Earth. And then Third Liberation Force, they, they try to come down, and they're like, don't worry. We just need y'all help to take out the relay tires, but then we got it. And then they were like, we don't get it. We're going to have to blow up the Earth, y'all. Like, we lost. <laughs> and I was just like, that was so stupid. What kind of I'm stupid like, plan is this? All or I'm nothing. Like, you guys still haven't figured out how to take these guys out. They come up in a spaceship that's got a clamshell like on it. 50 years. You <laughs> <laughs> had new technology. They haven't changed that much. <laughs> they put, listen, they were putting everything, they were hoping that they would remain undetectable the whole time. But it's just like, you got this massive fleet of spaceships moving up. Anybody could look out with the telescope and see, oh, here they go. <laughs> and they were like, there are people coming. They're like, send everybody, send everybody, send everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is insane. So, it was so stupid. I thought that it would just end with like a win loss of like, I thought the humans were going to win, the end, but we're going to lose. 
But then obviously they started working together because they're like, he about to try to blow up the whole earth. So then the end mm-hmm. was like, man, we'll leave. The end just decided to leave. But they were like, well, before we leave, we'll, you know, stop the little, because he shot out like electro, elect, electric, like missiles. The third liberation force shot electric missiles. And Ember were like, all right, we'll save y'all, we guess. They don't really don't say why. I guess they're just trying to work together. I don't think all I of think, them were gone, though. I think the last thing she said was is something along the lines of, and like, okay, you guys are telling me that you guys got the energy of Leto in you. You better be right. <laughs> Man. I'm going to leave already. We're going to find Leto somewhere else, whatever that is. I guess they're like, Man, we'll just go to another planet that's not so hostile. <laughs> right. <laughs> but we'll just beam ourselves down onto their cities and just annihilate everything again. And hopefully they won't attack us again. <laughs> That, so like not, but hang on. She let's just say that it seemed like she was willing to let her whole plan, just like the whole plan, just die with her if they didn't convince her to leave. Because she didn't do it. She didn't do jack until they told her you can leave. You know, and then she goes up. She turns into like the laser and annihilates the missiles. Yeah, it's like it's like. The humans never stood a chance to begin with. Why didn't you do this from the very beginning? <laughs> like, why'd you keep playing with them? You should have just killed them all immediately. Like, kept letting them try, keep trying to come back and fight you. Maybe it took them <laughs> too much energy or something, though. Nope. I guess maybe it does take energy to, to do that. But it's it's like she turned herself into the energy. So it's like, what, what, what gives here? What's happening? And then, at the end, you realize that Aisha's like, some of us are still here. And it's like, so all the NBIT didn't leave? Apparently not. Even though she said she was gathering her children to leave. And they didn't. It was like, what are y'all still doing here? It's like, okay, so all, so apparently all of them didn't leave. And there were a lot more that looked like people than the three they showed us. Hmm. Didn't think about that. Yeah. Because I don't think the crab, the grabs or the other ones, other forms of it were going to stay. They stand out. Mm-hmm. I'm saying, so overall, though, this is not a show I would have watched. Like, if you hadn't been like, let's watch this show, I would have been like, never. I halfway didn't like it. <laughs> like, you know, it's the best part, though. The ending. Because uh, I didn't have yellow, to watch it anymore. Yellow, you know, gets to. You know, because he's done hiding from the inmate because they they left, he doesn't have to disguise himself as a woman anymore. Yeah. And so he goes and so he tears off his you know, his dress mid <laughs> mid performance. He's like, Are you ready? Do you I'm a man now. <laughs> that old that old <laughs> Yes. And then that's and, when all and the women are like, Ooh. <laughs> And then somehow Stig in space throws out his, his girlfriend's locket. <laughs> when I tell you, I was like, how are you going to throw a locket out of a, uh, out of a space shuttle <laughs> while you're in space flying? That was the most insane thing I'd ever seen. I was like, if he was down on Earth, I would have been like, oh, okay, he can breathe. What are you trying to tell me? He put on an astronaut helmet real quick, open the cockpit, <laughs> he sucked out and then closed it. I'm like, this is Not only that, but you know that there's like like billions of like tiny little particles in space that are like always flying. A bunch of dust like, and rocks and stuff. Yeah, hypersonic speed and whatnot. It's like oh, but hypersonic you, speed. What are you talking? <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> it's just like you know, if you're traveling in a direction, you're pelting up against all these tiny little rocks, and spaceships are designed to you know not get hit rocks. with them, right? Unless they like rip open the whole ship. So what he does is. He's traveling at this speed, probably getting hit in the face with all these tiny little rocks, and throws his girlfriend's lock out. I'm like, why is your face not ripped off, sir? <laughs> so, okay, but how did you feel about the, t- the series? Did you like it? It was an amazing, uh, well, I wouldn't necessarily make I was going to say amazing. But it was it was a pretty good watch. I loved like the you know the story and the direction. Although I did kind of feel like they you know would repeatedly regress the characters 
just because they needed conflict in the episode. It's yeah. like, oh, I, I've resolved in my heart, you know, talking about Jim, I resolved in my heart to always fight, you know, against the NBA. I'm done in hiding. They crushed my Jeep. I almost died. I'm done. <laughs> I am a coward again. <laughs> now, initially, I thought this was part of like the Robotech series. Is this nothing? Is this not related at all? Is it an offshoot? Nope. It's not even an offshoot. Uh, it's a company called Harmony Gold um, bought the rights to the Macross name, mm -hmm. but not the actual series. Mm -hmm. So Macross is actually doing really well over there in Japan, and they're getting new episodes almost like every year. For uh, Robotech? That's in, that's in Macross. Wait, who's Macross? Say it again. Macross, the first uh, season of Macross was the first season of Robotech. So Macross is Robotech. Sort of. Macross is his own show. Harmony Gold, an American company, bought the rights to that first season. Oh. And so, mm -hmm. and then they bought the rights to a different show under the same like universe called Super Dimension Fortress Southern Cross. That's instead of wrong. Super Dimension Fortress Macross. Mm, okay. So that was then they turned that into the second season. They couldn't get Super Dimension Fortress Orgus. So they just went on ahead and stole, uh, you know, Genesis Clown Most Peter. Oh, okay. So now these totally unrelated animes are all being smashed together into a story that I guess makes sense. But when you go back and look at the actual shows, it's like none of this has anything to do with anything. <laughs> <laughs> right, so now we are done. I think we said everything we could say about Genesis Clown Most Peter. I still mm -hmm. almost wanted to call it Mountain Climber. So, <laughs> Genesis. It's a really good anime. And to the people that are watching this video, you should definitely give it a, you know, a try. Uh, I haven't noticed that there are a couple of episodes. How did you wind up watching some of the I watched it on Tubi. It's Tubi. T-U-B-I. It's an app that has a ton of anime on there. Actually, it has the Robotech ones on there. So. You Oh, so you managed to watch the whole thing? Mm-hmm. Oh. Was the Japanese dub? Mm hmm oh, okay. So you got the right one. I mean, okay. um, subbed. It wasn't dubbed. It was subbed. That's what I meant. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I guess you can't really dub the language that it was already from. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it was, it's a really good anime um, for what it is. It's, you know, got a little bit of kind of like, you know, monster of the week, kind of like bad guy of the week kind of situation. But, and they do, like, you know, <laughs> they do advance the plot, and they do eventually get, you know, to a resolution. I will say though that the resolution kind of felt a bit rushed. It kind of felt like they were starting what do you to kind of like rushed. Run. It was twenty five episodes. I know, but they they did everything, and then they got to the last like five episodes. Like, holy crap! We uh, haven't told them anything. <laughs> We we we've been so focused on trying to like you know make random you know stuff happen in these episodes that we forgot to actually <laughs> advance the plot. It was so frustrating. I was like, oh, he's like, let's God. just have let's have make, get married in this episode. Five five episodes down the line, uh, it, it literally was that. like a Dragon Ball Z where it was just like, well, we'll give you a tidbit here and a tidbit here and a tidbit here. But at least in Dragon Ball Z, all the tidbits had something to do with something. Because on this, it was just like, we're going to give you a little bit of information, but the rest of the episode has nothing to do with anything. Right. So. I bet, I bet you could probably make like a two hour long movie out of just like the important stuff. If you just cut, cut out all the like unimportant stuff, you could probably have a, a movie where Stig lands, he, you know, finds the rest of the group, then he goes to the reflex point. <laughs> Because that that was eight hours of unnecessariness. It didn't need to be eight hours in my mind. Yeah, but I'm sure someone else will appreciate that. But I was just like, mm -hmm. I mean, there were a few times when the show, you know, where its comedic moments genuinely made me made me laugh. Occasionally, meant would make me laugh, and that's a that's a really big occasionally. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not for me. That I that I cringed every time I heard her voice. Oh my goodness. Okay, so. 13 year old looking self. We don't know if she was 13. 
They never gave an age. They never did. Well, all I know wow. is that's the you know age of consent in Japan. So, oh, is that what it was? Yeah, that's why it was per- perfectly fine for her to keep on saying to random people, "I'm going to marry you." Oh, okay, okay. I just hated that it was every single guy she came. Every single. Do you have a house? Do you have a house? Okay. So, no. so, all right. So, some questions. Uh, number one, uh, what is your favorite anime? <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> I haven't watched no anime. Or do you have a favorite? Um, I guess I would say that the one that I want to buy the most merchandise from is Macross. I've seen, uh, I, I've watched parts of the original series and I've seen uh, one of their movies didn't yeah. even, like, see, like the whole thing because for whatever reason the site I was watching on didn't have the whole thing. It was broken up into three parts, and there was, you could tell there was some parts missing. <laughs> like the person <laughs> that recorded it say, "Oh crap! I forgot to press uh press pause." I'll just start from here. It'll be fine. <laughs> You're funny. Okay, so uh, Macross. yeah, I watched Macross Plus. That was a oh my god, the animation in that thing was beautiful. Like. I, I would love to review that movie with you because that was uh, another thing that I watched. You're going to make me watch it, huh? If I can find a good, you know, <laughs> version of it. <laughs> Just send me whatever it is, what the name of it is, and I'll see if I can find it. I had to search everywhere for that. Uh, for that. <laughs> it might be on Tubi. You never know. That is true. It might be on Tubi. I also uh, watched Akira, uh, and I wound up watching that on kind of like a bootleg site, too. <laughs> My goodness. Okay, so then, favorite, do you have a favorite TV show? Um, not necessarily, but I would say that my favorite, like, the one that I watched all the way through and loved was uh, Batman Beyond. Okay, you don't feel like that's anime? Different style? Yeah, different style. Okay. It, but I did like how close it was to anime. Yeah. And then, last question. What is your favorite movie? It doesn't have to be animated, but it can be if that's what you find yourself leaning more towards. My goodness, I have a, that is a very tough question. because Or at least, if it's not favorite, it could be like top two, you know. Top three, whatever, as long as they're number one. Or, you know, top one, two, three, or top five. And the thing is, I have no idea. Let me let me kind of like go through kind of like the movies that I have watched. Up in the, I like the Lego movie a lot. That was mm-hmm. one of my favorites because the song is you know really good. <laughs> Everything is awesome. <laughs> I, it's just you know to me the reason that that movie is really good is because they found ways to like include the song in everything. And I think Wild Style was like the actual artist of Everything Is Awesome song. She was. I feel like she had something to do with the Everything is Awesome song. Or she used to be in a huh. pop group or something like that. I can't remember. <laughs> um, let me think. So obviously I would put Mac Macross Plus at the top because of the uh amazing anime. Was that a movie? Oh yeah, that was a movie. movie. hmm Oh, so when you told me your anime at the beginning, it was an anime movie. What was your favorite anime T V show? Oh, anime anime TV show specifically? Um, anime series. I don't think I've ever watched an anime series all the way through. I man, you can't really call. I've heard people say you can't really call Pokemon an anime, uh, and it's not it's not my favorite because uh, yeah, like it's just an car- a cartoon that kinda is an anime that I have kind of seen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And the, okay. I, the only reason I can't bring myself to really like Pokemon is because the writing is for kids. It, it, let's just get that out the way. They never discuss anything like deep or serious. You know, Pokemon catcher, Pokecatcher, trainer. Yeah, Pokemon trainer. Trainer. <laughs> The one time that it, Ash always dies and Does goes he? back <laughs> in every That's movie that he's ever been in, he always dies. Pikachu has to resuscitate him. <laughs> It's not even Pikachu. It's I mean Pikachu <laughs> couldn't even resuscitate him the first time he died. Did you see Detective Pikachu? 
I am not watching that movie. It was good. That's only because you looked at the. Okay, okay, I'm recording this still. I know. I don't want that to be in there. <laughs> you need you need a little bit of humor in. in, in. I don't know if that was humor. That was just a weird fake. <laughs> <laughs> And then, you need a little okay. bit of humor in there. Okay, so you don't have a favorite anime. You don't have, or not a favorite anime series, but you said Macross would be your favorite anime movie. Favorite, and then you said favorite TV show was what? Batman Beyond. Batman Beyond, okay. And favorite movie or top three? Um, shucks. And you said Lego movie. I'm trying to think of a, a good Will Smith movie. That I've seen that wasn't iRobot. Oh, I Mini love Black. iRobot. <laughs> you don't like iRobot. Men in Black. Okay, so Lego Mini movie, Black, yeah. Men in Black, and which Men in Black? Um, I don't know. I think the only one that I've really, like, actually seen, um, you know, in its entirety was the first movie. Okay. So Lego movie, Men in Black, and what's your third one? Third favorite movie. Uh, I don't. I mean, like I said, I guess Macross Plus <laughs> counts because you is, already did it for Alan. <laughs> can't have it on the other one. Um, I don't know. I'm just gonna come up with like one off the top of my head because I honestly I would have to like really like go back through these movies and try to figure out like which one was my favorite. Uh, but really I would say Independence Day. Oh, wait. I forgot about my favorite th- thing that I can never shut up about. It was Star Wars. The first Star Wars movie was my favorite. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, I can't remember how it goes. <laughs> it did sound like Superman. That's why I was like, that's not it. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun. Is that so- is that dun, 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 dun. Thank you. It did sound like <laughs> Superman. Man, I did Superman things on. Yeah, when they when they're flying down the Death Star trench. <laughs> What's the Imperial March theme song? Dun 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 dun. dun, dun. Can't remember anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so boom. Okay, so top three. Do you have a favorite Star Wars movie, or would you just say the whole series is top three? Oh, uh, actually, I think it. I think, and this is a favorite for a lot of people. It's uh, Empire Strikes Back. Just Which one is that? Which episode? That's the uh, second, you know, but fifth movie. You know, so the second five. when it came out, but the fifth movie now. <laughs> okay. I, I liked it a lot because it. Um, I love like escape sequences in movies. Mm-hmm. So watching them try to like mobilize their troops and like you know hold back these guys. Uh, but also like try to like get everybody off the you know planet. That was cool. Okay. Especially especially if you play the Rogue Squadron games where you get to participate in those battles. Hmm. Awesome. All right. Cool. All right. So before we, go, I'll review those when I I'll review those when I'm actually buy. <laughs> All right. Uh, where you get going go on Disney Plus? Oh, you talking about the game? Yeah. Okay, that's not on Disney Plus. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. So is there? Do you have anything that you would like to tell the people? Are you working on anything? Website? Anything like that? Mm, I mean, yeah. Don't go check out the website now. It's called cleanreviews.com. I have to. I .com actually have to request it. Uh, oh yeah, dot net. Cleanreviews.net. So, uh, so yeah, just type in cleanreviews.net. It'll probably show up. Probably won't. Uh, <laughs> but look for it. What are you reviewing? Video games. I, I, I do video game reviews. All right. All right, cool. I'll, I only have three reviews up at the moment. Um, but, you know, any of the ones that say coming soon are games that I actually have in my library that I can review. So be on the lookout for those ones coming all right, cool. Well, thank you, Zap75, for joining me today, introducing me to a new anime that I never would have watched because it was from 1984. <laughs> you got, you got, look, you got to be able to reach back in the it past. It looks old. <laughs> listen, listen. You got to be able to look into, like, you know how I play like all the old video games. I want to feel it.
I want to experience what those kids in the 80s experienced. Oh, because that's what I was saying. I feel like the games today, you really feel an experience, but you want to know what it was like in the 80s. It was acceptable in the 80s. <laughs> da, da. It was acceptable at the time. <laughs> I got love for you if you were born in the 80s. 80s. All right, I'm sorry. Billy Jeans, not my love. Is that from, I don't think that's from the 80s, is it? She's just I a girl. Get right. <laughs> She's just the girl. Please say I am the one. Watch your tongue, Brad. It is not my son. But all right. Like I said, thank you for joining me, uh, Zach 75. And I guess send me Macross Plus. And okay. We can review that next time. All right. Thank you. Sure. Bye. Bye.